Okay, so how do you actually calculate that percentage of completion? If we're not going to base revenues on billings, how are we going to determine it? Again, 90% of the time, contractors are going to use something called the cost-to-cost -cost method. And so you take your cost incurred so far to date. So a lot of times I use the example of a rocking chair just to be easy. So let's say I've put $5 of time and materials in the building a rocking chair. I take that and I divide it by my total estimated project cost, which in this case, let's just say, I think it's going to take me, let me go back here. So in this case, let, let's say, I think it's going to take me $10 to build that rocking chair. So $5 of cost incurred divided by $10 total estimated cost. I am 50% complete on that rocking chair. I take 50% complete times my contract amount. Let's say I think I can sell my rocking chair for $20. So I take $20 times 50% complete, and I've actually earned revenues of $10. Okay. I compare that $10 of earned revenue to what I've built so far. Let's say in this case, I've built nothing. I have an underbilling of $10 because I've earned 10, I've built nothing. So if you're like me, you learn a lot better seeing actual. Uh, examples rather than just a bunch of dirty accounting formulas on a screen. So let's walk through a couple just real quick. Okay, so this first one, you've got a million dollar contract. You've got estimated costs of $930,000. You've incurred costs to date so far of $465,000, you, but you've been able to bill nothing so far. For whatever reason, you haven't been able to send the bill. Yeah, so what your income statement is going to look like before you do a percentage completion adjustment is it's going to look like you have no revenue because again, in our example, we've built nothing. So nothing has run through the accounting system. So it looks like we've earned nothing. We haven't done our percentage completion adjustment yet, but we've got $465,000 of actual cost hitting. So if you sent this to the bank or you sent this to your owner, it's going to look like you're about to go bankrupt and you're not doing very well. So this is why it's important that we're not keeping financial statements based on billings, and we do this calculation ideally on a monthly basis. Because I've got some clients or prospects that don't do it until the end of the year, and then you've got monthly financial statements that look like a roller coaster. So we walk through our, our calculation. We've got four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars of costs divided by our nine hundred thirty thousand dollars estimate. We're fifty percent complete on this job. We take that fifty percent complete times our contract amount of a million dollars. We've actually earned revenue of $500,000. We compare that to our billings. Again, we weren't able to bill anything. And in this case, we have a $500,000 underbilling, which makes sense. We've underbilled. So how you, that actually runs through the financial statements is I now need to post an adjustment to bring my revenue up. So now my income statement looks a lot more normal. And the whole idea here is we're matching our expenses with our revenues. So that they're kind of hitting at the same time and making our income statement look a lot more reasonable. 